Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel Hattie Homemaking where I make videos on homemaking, femininity and fashion. So today I'm really excited about this video because it's all about how to become a homemaker but more specifically a more full-time homemaker so that you don't have any other job and you are a stay-at-home wife, housewife, however you want to call it. So what I find really exciting about my channel at the moment is obviously I'm really into homemaking and love all aspects of it but right now I do have a full-time job as well that's just what suits our lifestyle right now although I do have plans in the future to become a housewife full-time homemaker so it's exciting that you're almost going to come with me on that journey of transitioning so I'm excited to show you that transition when it does happen but I kind of for this video I kind of wanted to say what you can do and also what I'm currently doing to prepare for that stage of my life so both practical steps but also sort of mental mental well-being and things like that just the whole package of oh you can see my shadow <laughs> That was distracting. <laughs> so just sort of the whole package of everything you need to know if you want to become a full-time homemaker and how to make it happen. So currently I'm at the stage in my life where I am getting married this year, hopefully, who knows with the situation. We've already moved our date, we're hoping we don't have to move it again, but that's beside the point. So right now I am in a situation where I'm hopefully going to be married <laughs> and we will be looking at starting a family. So I've sort of got that bit of my life sort of done. <laughs> That sounds like really strange to say, but in terms of being a stay-at-home wife or a full-time homemaker, you have got to have some way of bringing in an income. So it is important really that you do need to be in a relationship because otherwise how are you going to get the income for your family and your home? So I think it's important if you are single and you're looking for a romantic relationship to sort of make your intentions clear, maybe not on the first date and say, look, I want to be a housewife, so you better be making that dollar. <laughs> what I mean is just making sure that you're on the same sort of wavelength and you have the same sort of ideas about what marriage is and what you would like out of a marriage and how you would like to raise a family and things like that so if you're single I think that's really important so now that I've got that little spiel out the way I'm gonna go into exactly what you need to do to become a full-time homemaker if that is what you so wish Okay, so the first point, and in my opinion, the most important point with the situation that we're living in now and society that we live in today, the reality is that most people now do need two incomes in order to live comfortably and to uphold the standard of life that is sort of the norm at the moment. So if you are wanting to reduce down to one income, you do need to think practically about that. So first of all, you need to look at your lifestyle, obviously dependent on what your partner is earning if they are just earning sort of a middle range salary then you will need to adjust your lifestyle expectations so that could look like maybe not going on holiday as often shopping second hand for clothes it could be shopping more efficiently for your food shop and making sure that you're not just buying the most expensive thing and you're actually shopping around a little bit so you really need to think about how you can adjust your lifestyle in order to sustain both your situation now but also think about your future family how many children you want and if that's actually feasible. So also right now what I'm doing is it's important to start saving. So if you have a full-time job right now and you are with a partner or married or whatever, try to already live on that other person's salary and save yours. That might not be 100% feasible every month for say if you've got a big bill or I don't know, your car needs an MOT or something like that, but just try as much as you can to start now and and save that money that way you always have a rainy day fund when you are a housewife that you have your own money and you have your own freedom and you can still have your own bank account and make sure you're keeping your credit rating up and things like that so try and save as much as you can now so along those lines as well it's important to start working to a budget now a really important part of being a housewife no matter how much money you do or do not have is about budgeting and looking to the future so try and keep to some sort of budget whether that's writing down everything you spend on and looking at how you can save here or there a lot of banks now have mobile apps where they actually break it down for you mine does and sometimes it proper shames me into why have you spent this amount on amazon this week and i'm like oh <laughs> 
So just try and work to some sort of budget because that is what you're going to be doing in the future. The next really important thing to think about is your pension. So in the UK, we have to work for 10 years in order to qualify for a state pension. I'm not sure if many people know that. I didn't know that until I started looking into it. I really think finances should be taught in school because it's just a little bit of a minefield and luckily I have Paul who works it all out for me and just tells me what I need to know because I just could not understand things like that. <laughs> so work out if when you are older, and I know it's quite difficult to think about when we're retired, especially when we're so young and you know live in our prime years and starting what we want to do in life and things like that. It's very difficult to think about when you're older, but it is so important because you don't want to get to 70 years old with having your partner still having to go out to work when they might not be in the best of health themselves. You don't want them to have that pressure on themselves to need to provide for you because nowadays state pensions aren't the same as what they used to be and it does take into account most of the time that in most families it's two people that is working so think about that and think about if you do want to qualify for your state pension where do you want to fit those 10 years of work in but always keep an open mind as well you never know what opportunity could come your way or if there would be a little bit of a side flexible working for a company that would actually fit into your life really well which leads me on to my next point as well in that you can still be a full-time homemaker housewife and still have a side hustle so say for example at the moment I have been working on this YouTube channel and a blog and it's a well-known thing that sometimes if you get lucky you can make a little bit of income so obviously I'm doing this just for a hobby now but who knows in the future in two or three years when we do need a little bit of side income you never know what can happen so I'm not saying to start a blog or a YouTube for that reason, but maybe have a think about something you might like to do. It could be a side baking business, or I know a lot of people have been making jewelry and things like that. So just have a little think about if there's anything like that you want to do. The thing about money when you want to be a housewife is you've got to think of two things both that you are going to be comfortable and able to live your life but also a big thing for me has been to protect my partner's mental health because I don't want him feeling like the weight of the world is on his shoulders and he's got to support me and a family until you know he is in his late 70s. I just don't think that's a good amount of pressure to put on one person so I try to help with that by thinking about ways we can budget, adjust lifestyle, all those things I've just told you about and having a side hustle, thinking about pensions and things like that. It really is a balancing act. I think there's so many benefits to being a housewife and having one person at home. I think it enhances the relationship. I think children get more nurturing in general. And I think it's just more of a simple, traditional way to live, which really appeals to me. That being said, there's also the balance of that pressure all going on to one person. So it's important to discuss with your partner how you're gonna work that and also also just keep an open mind like I said you can have all the plans in the world but like we've seen this year sometimes life has other plans and you have to adjust So my next point which I've kind of just touched on is understanding why homemaking and why housewives are so important in the first place. That way you are going to always feel valued every day. So say for example you go out for a meal and someone asks what you do, you don't want to feel that sinking feeling in your stomach where you have to say I'm a housewife and worry about judgement. People are going to judge you depending on how you carry yourself so if you're confident with your role and you know your value in it, you're going to be received so much better to if you actually seem embarrassed about it so have a little research have a little read about homemaking and housewives and how that can make such a difference in how people feel nurtured and how the home feels and just get your reasons of why you want to be a housewife straight in your head I have got them firmly straight in my head I've made a whole video about it which I will link below about why I want to be a housewife so have a little watch of my video and then have a think for yourself about why you want to be a housewife and just a Allow yourself to understand your deep reasons for wanting to do that and just get them strong firmly in your head so that you are able to express that a lot easier both to other people and to yourself. 
So my next point is actually a quite important point and that is to learn basic homemaking skills. So nowadays we really aren't taught homemaking in school as much as we were in the past. I actually went to an all girls school where it was a little bit more traditional actually so we did have lessons in things like sewing and cooking but I have to be honest that time in school I was probably not the same personality as I am now and I probably didn't take it as serious as I should have done and I so wish I could have the opportunity to have those sewing lessons again because I've recently got a sewing machine and it's just a bit of a total disaster <laughs> but it's important if you want to be a homemaker that you actually know how to do it in the first place and that is something you can start now whether you're still at home living with your parents whether you do have your own house and you've not met someone or if you're working full-time they are still things you can learn to do now in your spare time so that includes things like cooking you will never ever regret learning how to cook. I have a bit of a fight on my hands in this house because Paul absolutely loves cooking so he does tend to take over and make most of the meals but we know once I'm a full-time homemaker and he's going out to work it is going to be me making most of the meals so it is important that I know how to cook. I know the basics. I have some good recipes under my sleeve. You actually don't need as many recipes as you think. A lot of the times things can be adapted and put in different ways so as long as you have the basics of a couple of dishes and one really important thing I think if you know how to do it will take you so far and that's just knowing how to cook different meats because you can always choose a different meat and put it with some vegetables and a different carb and then you have a meal ready to go so make sure you do take the time to learn how to cook but also other things like learning how to repair basic things so if say your favourite dress, the zip breaks, you actually know how to prepare that. We do live in such a throwaway culture nowadays where we, if something's broken, we'll throw it away and then just go out and buy something new. But if you are a homemaker and you are budgeting like we've spoke about, then it's going to be so much more cost effective for you to learn how to fix things. Also learning how to properly clean your home. We all saw the absolute rise of Mrs Hinch in the past couple of years and it just goes to show how many people don't know how to clean basic things in their home and I have to admit there are times where I have watched people's Instagram stories thinking I have never done that so things like properly cleaning out the washing machine around the rim didn't know to do that <laughs> things like pulling out your sink plugs and soaking them in bleach things like that just learn how to properly clean your home so that things don't get disgusting <laughs> So my next point after you have learned the basics is then to go on to learn some discipline and some routines. So when you are a full-time homemaker or housewife, it's not just a quick ticket to an easy life. There are still going to be days where you have no motivation and you can't be bothered doing it. No matter how much you love your job, there are days where people get up and you just can't motivate yourself to get in the mood to do it. And it's going to be the exact same when you're a full-time homemaker so some days you could wake up and there is stuff that needs doing in the house there are meals that need to be prepared there are children that need looking after hopefully one day and you need to make sure that you have the self-discipline to tend to all that even when you have no motivation so a way you can learn to do this is by developing some new routines so I spoke about in my glow up video about how habits are the thing that keeps us going and it goes for the same in homemaking as well you need to have those daily habits habits that are going to set you up for success. So have a little play with some different cleaning routines. You will see on my channel I've tried Fly Lady. I'm currently not doing that at the moment but I probably should get back into it. But there are loads of different cleaning routines and different techniques and things so just familiarise yourself with it all and find something that works for you. But most importantly keep practising that discipline muscle because you're going to need it more than ever when you're a housewife. My next point kind of follows on from that as well, which is about adjusting your expectations. So I think a lot of the time when we have a goal in life of somewhere we wanna to get to, so say for example, my ultimate goal in life is to become a housewife and a full-time mom. So it would be very easy for me right now, living the life that I live right now, to expect the grass to be greener on the other side and to expect that as soon as I'm there, I'm gonna be happy every single day and everything is gonna be better and life is just gonna be 
fantastic. That is not the way life works and I think it's so important to have gratitude and understand where you are now in life and to learn to be happy with the everyday rather than just waiting for the next stage in your life. So I think it's important to one, adjust your expectations so that when you get there, you don't have a sudden realisation that you are not this completely new and changed person that's happy every single day and if you can practice happiness and gratitude every day now that when you get there you're so much more likely to have that gratitude every day and to feel grateful for the little things and notice little wins in your day if you've already practiced doing that now so I'm not gonna lie I do have very high hopes for when I'm a housewife I'm sure life is gonna be lovely most days but there will be times where times are harder and I want to prepare myself for that mentally as well so it's not a shock when I get there. My next point is we have seen this year how we need human connection to be happy. So we've all missed our friends and family and our community and physically going out and seeing people and having arrangements and being able just to nip out for coffee with a friend. I can't wait to do that again. But this year has really demonstrated how important that human connection is in life form, not just on the internet. So when you are becoming a housewife, I think it is important to acknowledge that there could be days where you feel lonely and to make an active effort to get involved in your local community and to have some good friends around you so that when you are having a day where you feel a little bit lonely or unmotivated, you are able to just text a friend or a family member or someone in your neighborhood hood to come round for a cup of tea because especially if you are a mom and you have a child it can be very isolating and you might just be around little baby voices all day and all you want to hear is an adult conversation so do make sure to take the time to cultivate those relationships now so that when you are a housewife or a full-time homemaker you have that in place and then my final point is all about having a plan b so as mentioned a couple of times in this video you have no idea what life is going to throw at you and you need to have another option for your life for if something doesn't work out say for example your partner loses their job for a couple of months and you need to step in and make a little bit of money to keep the family ticking over you do need to be prepared to do that I'm not saying it will happen but I think it is important to have that plan B for if you do need to so I think it's important to have an education it's important to have a couple of years of work experience whether that is paid or voluntary just so you have those skills that would be needed in the workplace for if something did happen so although we want to live on a bed of roses and imagining that everything's going to be great we also do need to be realistic and I think if you are a housewife and you've one saved up money you've two got your education and some work experience you're just going to feel more comfortable every single day that if something were to go wrong you do have another option in place although Otherwise, I think if I hadn't had those things in place, I would have an underlying anxiety that something's going to go wrong. And I just think it's important to foresee potential things that could happen and to prepare for it so that you can actually enjoy the moment that you're in now more rather than worrying about what could happen. So that is the end of this video, all about how to become a homemaker. Naturally, everyone is a homemaker if they do any homemaking chores, whether it's full time or not. So this video isn't to say that if you aren't a full-time housewife that you aren't a homemaker because I am living proof that I love homemaking and everything to do with it but I still work full-time so this video is more about just how to make it a full-time thing so I really really hope you have enjoyed this video I hope it's been useful please do subscribe if you are new here and I will see you in my next video